about obviously Afghanistan, which is uh, uh, a big issue for us Pakistanis because uh, stability in Afghanistan means stability in Pakistan. We also want to talk about uh, all three neighbors, Afghanistan, uh, India, Kashmir, and of course uh, Iran. Uh, it's uh, just we, we will discuss the situation there because all, these all three neighbors of Pakistan. And he as lives if, in a very friendly neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as if they're not already enough challenges, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. President, after your last meeting with the Prime Minister, you offered to mediate between India and Pakistan over Kashmir. And since then, the situation has got even more complicated, and India continues to deny or accept any mediation. So where does your offer stand now? And don't you think it would always stand? Now? If I can help, uh, I would certainly do that. <coughs> and uh, it will be dependent on both of these gentlemen. One without the other doesn't work if you're going to do mediation or if you're going to do an arbitration. But certainly I would be willing to help if both wanted, if both Pakistan, let's say, and India wanted me to do that. I am ready, willing, and able. It's a complex issue. It's been going on for a long time. But if, uh, if both wanted it, I would be ready to do it. Mr. President, but the only thing is, reverting back to my question in the other office on Kashmir, yes. you know, the thing is, you are asking both the parties to accept and agree. One is aggressor, violator of the UN resolutions, and plus non-compliance, plus, you know, merging Kashmir into its own territory. This is the kind of reporter I like. I like this reporter. And how can you are, you, are you a member of this team, or are you a... I'm, a member of this, I'm not a member of this team. I'm you know what? You're journalist. saying, you're saying no, what is, you think. Uh, that uh, be you question, no, Mr. but I have to be how, requested. How can you, how can you make an aggressor and an aggressor okay. meet and the I violation understand. of the UN resolutions? Very fair Thank question you. or statement. I'll, let me put that one down as a statement, <laughs> if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, but you're right. You have to have a... Uh, you have to have two parties that want to agree, and if they, when they come, and, and at some point India may come, I have a very good relationship with Prime Minister Modi, I have a very good relationship with Prime Minister Khan, and if at any time they say, you know, we have some points that we think we can maybe iron out, I think I'd be an extremely good arbitrator. I've done it before, believe it or not, and I've never failed as an arbitrator. I've been asked to arbitrate disputes, pretty big ones, from friends, and I've done it in a good, successful fashion. If uh, if I can be of help, you know that. If I can be of help, let me know. But you'd have to have the assent also from the other side. Mr. 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 Johnson now call for a new deal, just one little for a new Iran deal. This is the first time he's called for that. I wonder what your reaction to it, and have you discussed that with Well, I think Greece? that's why he's a winner. That's why he's a man that's going to be successful and the UK, and I think that's great. You're talking about Boris, yes, right? Talk about Boris. Uh, Boris is a man who, uh, number one, he's a friend of mine, and number two, he's very smart, very tough, and he does want a new deal because the other deal was ready to expire. It was at a very short number of years left. All that money paid and wasted. Uh, you didn't uh, have the right to inspect the appropriate sites. You were looking at sites that would never be used to create nuclear. The, the sites that they would use. We weren't allowed to inspect. What kind of a deal is that? And ballistic missiles. They're allowed to test ballistic missiles and other things. But one of the biggest things is the fact that the, the agreement is going to expire in a very short number of years. And what kind of a deal is that? We're dealing with countries. You have to go long term. So uh, I respect Boris a lot. And I am not at all surprised that he was the first one to come out and say that. Mr. <laughs> So this is the first time we get honest leadership like you in America. And I agree with that. This is the first time you've had honesty. You've had a lot of dishonesty, and they've treated Pakistan very badly. People in my position have treated Pakistan very badly. And I think that uh, I wouldn't say Pakistan has treated us too well either, but maybe there was a reason. And in fact, I think there was a reason for it. I trust Pakistan, but people before me didn't, but they didn't know what they were doing. So it's just one of those little problems in life. No, I have, I, you know what I do? I trust this gentleman right here, and I do trust Pakistan. I know I have a lot of Pakistani friends, 
living in New York. They're smart. Great negotiators, by the way, in case you had any questions. They're among the toughest negotiators <coughs> in the world. So, so and, and you know what? It's all going to work out. But if I can help, I'd like to help. But I don't think you've ever had a president that felt the way I do in a positive way about Pakistan. I don't think you have. I've looked back and I've seen where it was. And, and, but I also have a very good relationship with India. I have a good relationship with both. So that if, if they decide to use that feeling among both, I think we can help out. But so this has been a long, this been a long standing feud. This has been going on for a long time. So you're Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, 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 and the agreement we had does not cover that. It was not doing well. It was doing very poorly. And now Iran is doing very poorly. Iran is uh, a different place than when I took over. When I took over the United States, when I became president, Iran was a real threat to the entire Middle East and maybe beyond. And now uh, they're having very, very big difficulties, to put it mildly. So I, we'll see. Are you happy with the progress that Pakistan has made countering terrorism? Particularly eliminating terrorism. I've heard they've made great progress, and under this leader, he's a great leader, I think he wants to make great progress, because there's, there's no solution the other way. The other way is only going to lead to death and chaos and poverty. It's all it's going to lead to, and he understands it. The Prime Minister understands it. Are you concerned about the human rights situation in Kashmir? About which? Human rights situation. Human rights sure, violation. I'd like to see everything work out. I want it to be Have humane. You know, I want everybody to be treated well. You have two big countries, and they're warring countries, and they've been fighting. And I mean, I heard a very aggressive statement yesterday. I don't have to say that. I was, I was there. I didn't know I was going to hear that statement, I had said. But I was sitting there, and I heard a very aggressive statement yesterday from India, from the Prime Minister. And uh, I will say it was very well received within the rule, you know, within the room. The, the statement itself, that was a big room. There were 59,000 people. Uh, but it was a very aggressive statement, and I hope that they're going to be able to come together, India and Pakistan, and do something that's really smart and good for both. And I'm sure there could be — there's always a solution, and I, I really believe there's a solution to that. Easy, easy. You've asked one already. Go ahead. Quick, quickly. Make one second statement. Now, if Go ahead, you, make a statement. you can solve this outstanding issue of Kashmir, yeah. very likely and definitely you will be deserving a Nobel Prize on that. I think Peace I'll get Nobel a Nobel Prize, Prize for How a lot of that? things. Mr. President, Mr. President, I think I'm going to get a Nobel Prize for a lot of things if they gave Mr. it out President, fairly, President, which they don't. Mr. President, they gave it out — well, they gave one to Obama immediately upon his ascent to the presidency, and he had no idea why he got it. And you know what? That was the only thing I agreed with him on. Mr. President, other than Pakistan and India, other than Pakistan and India, the Kashmir people have suffering last 15 days. They will talk later on, but right now there was human rights violation in Kashmir. 50 days lockdown, no internet, no food, no nothing. So, you know, what, what do you want to do for the Kashmiri people? Where do you find reporters like this? <laughs> <laughs> These guys are
Uh, Mr. President, I was going to raise it uh, in private, but it needs to be said that for 50 days, 8 million people are under siege by 900,000 troops. And uh, it's a humanitarian issue. And so I was going to say that had, were, you, were you supposed to meet uh, Narendra Modi now, I would have asked you to at least lift the siege. I mean, it's a huge humanitarian crisis taking place. Okay, so we're going to be talking about no, that we'll in a little while. That. Mr. President, what is your expectation from American President what about the Kashmir issue? My, my expectations, President Trump heads the most powerful country in the world. And the most powerful country in the world has a responsibility. And, you know, this, uh, you're, you very kindly uh, want to mediate in this. And you also said that to both of us, India and Pakistan, has to agree to mediation. But unfortunately, India is refusing to talk to us. So uh, in this situation, I feel that this is the beginning of a crisis. I honestly feel that this crisis is going to get much bigger, what is happening in Kashmir. So we would like to talk about that later. But just the fact that the position of the United States, it's, it's the most powerful country. It can uh, affect the United Nations Je uh, Security Council. It has a voice. Uh, so we look to the U.S. to uh, put out flames in the world. I, 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 and I will say this, look, out of my respect for your prime minister, I will say that uh, many countries wanted to meet with me and us, the United States, during this very short three-day period, and we were unable to meet with many of them. One of the countries I wanted to meet with, with was Pakistan and your prime minister. And it's an honor to be here with you. And I think you should let us start talking now because, uh, Thank you. but I do appreciate is a tremendous uh, spirit from your press. I don't see that with us. They want to always tear our country down. And with your press, it's really, they would like to see something positive for your country. And I will tell you this, you have a great leader. And uh, he's a good man, he's a nice man, happens to be a great athlete, not that that matters, but it's always, it's always nice. Well, you are a great leader doing uh, that. Thank you very much. You, you take care of yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. This way, guys. Thank you.